Hey guys, this is going to be a collective tarot love message. It is going to be a Valentine's Day special. This reading isn't intended for any sign specifically, but if you've clicked on this reading, then you've been led here, you've been guided here, you've been drawn here for a reason. So let's go ahead and um, let's see what the cards, um, what messages the cards have for you. You've got someone here, a connecting energy who wants to get close or wants to get closer to you. And this individual in particular wishes that they were your Valentine. I feel like this is someone whom you're navigating a very complex relationship or a very complex connection with. Okay, there's a lot of complexities and a lot of intricacies, also a lot of layers to the relationship or to the connection that you have with this in individual. This is someone who is scared, okay? They're afraid of getting close to you. Now, why would this be? Um, as mentioned earlier, it is a little bit complex. It's not so black and white. It's not so straightforward. I mean, there's um, complexities here. There's um, blockages here. There's patches of uh, gray area. I feel like this is someone who has a fear of getting close to someone, okay? But then again, there could be other blockages. Like for instance, maybe this person is in a relationship you know, or is committed to someone else, or maybe you're in a relationship and you're committed to someone else and they don't want to overstep um, any boundaries. Maybe this is someone who is, you know, afraid of getting too close to, um, afraid of getting too close to someone because um, they may just, you know, have this fear of being vulnerable um, and, you know, overcoming intimacy is a fee is something that they haven't been able to um, overcome um, they could also be you know it's there could also be some emotional wounds that are staying you know that have stayed with them for such a long time and they're afraid to get close because maybe those emotional wounds haven't healed yet and the, you know they're afraid to sort of reopen things I feel like this is someone who's kind of keeping you at arm's length because they're essentially I feel like it's because they're avoiding getting hurt okay they're also um they're also living with this fear of intimacy, okay, because they're scared of getting hurt and, um, you know, they're scared of putting themselves in a situation that is painful and that is really hurtful. And um, as a result, they're living with this fear of intimacy. And I think maybe some of you have slowly uncovered that this person does have, you know, this fear of intimacy. It's it's the connection that you've de developed with this person is um, is a very strong one, okay? Because I feel like there's a closeness that you share with this person. It might even be a soul connection, okay? Um, you might not even understand it, or they may not even understand it, but there's this, you know, whether it's an emotional connection, whether it's an intellectual one, um, whether it's just a physical, a romantic, or a sexual one, there is a closeness, okay? But there's also blockages that are preventing the relationship from maybe from happening in the first place or from flourishing here i feel like this person is emotionally unavailable to an extent as well okay because this is someone who i feel like maybe comes across as non-committal and therefore they may be attached to several several different people and you know from the outside in it looks like this person is a bit of a player you know they like to keep their options open they're playing the field however, however when it comes to the underlying cause I think this is someone who's afraid of losing you know his or her independence they're afraid of losing their sense of self and so what happens is they're scared to get emotionally invested in a relationship so again you know this is someone who is wishing they were with you this Valentine's Day or is wishing um, that you would spend Valentine's Day with them but I feel like it's this fear of emotional intimacy that is um, you know that's causing them to keep a distance whether it's a physical distance whether it's an emotional distance because for some of you you know you, you have the two of swords here and the two of swords could be an indication that there is no contact no communication from this person okay but then it's placed along with the seven of cups and the seven of cups of course is you know it, it's about wishing and um so there's this energy of them not necessarily communicating maybe with you maybe this is someone who is maybe you've blocked each other okay you've literally like blocked each other's number or you've blocked each other's on uh, on social media maybe the both of you even though you know you have this desire to talk and communicate and to just air things out you're scared you you you're not um there is no um there is no contact there is no communication here um i feel like this person
I feel like as your bond strengthened with this person, I also feel like signs of fear have surfaced. Um, and I also feel like there's also been signs of sabotage when it comes to this individual, okay? Um, there may have been a decline, okay? As of recently, there may have been a decline in communication altogether. So whether this person is not talking to you or not as, you know, they're not as communicative or as responsive as they once were. I also feel like this person has maybe, you know, maybe has is prone to like emotional outbursts or, you know, because of the Wheel of Fortune here, they may have these like um, relationship cycles, okay, where, you know, the bond strengthens and as it does, they pull away. Um, I feel like this person has this inability to express, you know, what they're really feeling openly, okay? Um, I feel like it, you know, it's this, it comes from, maybe it's a sign, you know, it could be a sign of low self-esteem. It could it also could just be their, you know, discomfort, their discomfort when it comes to expressing their feelings. Um, I don't think it's fear of abandonment, and I'll tell you why. It could, okay, it could be, but I don't necessarily think it's fear of abandonment. I don't think it's, you know, this person is scared to get into a relationship with you because they're scared that, you know, um, that, you know, you, you're going to leave them, okay? Um, I feel like it's more, you know, allow them allowing you to get close, because, them, sorry, preventing you from allowing you to get close because they're sort of, you know, emotionally isolating themselves. And what's that doing is, you know, it's sort of preventing them from getting hurt. You know, the fear of abandonment sometimes, um, well, oftentimes it kind of has the opposite effect. What happens is it typically tends to push people into quick attachments, okay? Because uh, it, it sort of keeps people stuck in unhealthy relationships because their greatest concern is that the other person is going to leave them so it kind of keeps them you know it pushes them into relationships early and kind of um or very quickly to form uh, attachments and it kind of keeps them stuck there and it has them stay there so i don't necessarily think it's that it could be though um i just feel like this person is um I feel like there's deep, there is deep um, rooted issues here, okay, there's deep seated issues. Um, there's subconscious patterns that your person has developed. And look, to be honest with you, I don't know that they've even realized what they're doing, okay? Um, I feel like this person may, that they have some very strong feelings for you, okay? Um, it could be love, okay? It could be love, it could be lust, but as we know, you know, lust... Um, can form into love um, it just might be some very strong they might be crushing on you it might just be some very strong romantic feelings for you but this person you know how the feelings are there but there's also what's what might even be stronger than those romantic feelings is the fear of becoming attached to you okay and that stems from their previous history and it's also stems from subconscious patterns that this person has developed whether it's early in their childhood or in their previous relationships and i don't think you know and that, that's why i say you know this is complex right if you look at the wheel of fortune to me it kind of looks like you know this web this is why i feel like it's not so even though you might think oh okay this person is being distant or they're not interested or you know they have you know they, um they've got you know they're a bit of a player or they've got um other options and choices around them i don't think it's that i feel like there's deep-seated issues here that need to be you know carefully examined here confronted and uh, emotional wounds that i feel like need to be healed here so i think it's 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 more that you know um I don't think this person is able to have a conversation with you let alone with themselves about you know what's preventing them and it's keeping them in this mindset where I feel like, you know, a, a part of them, even if it's just a small part, a part of them knows that they have intimacy issues that they need to work through. Um, but I think it's, you know, they don't possess, they don't possess the confidence to, you know, to confront those issues, to heal and to work through those issues. Um, 
parents and what they do is you know they try and control what they do or how they act and how they feel I feel like this person is sending you mixed messages, okay? Um, and I think this person, especially with the Seven of Cups, I feel like this is someone who, you know, sends you mixed um, messages, mixed, like, communication. Okay? Um, people are complex creatures, right? And uh, when it comes to communication, um, sometimes you know messages can be lost in translation and sometimes you know it's it can be quite a challenge to interpret um, very confusing and contradicting messages from someone right um i feel like this is someone whom you feel like is really present in your life one you know one day and then the next day this is someone who is very distant okay and i feel like it's this moment it's moments like these or it's the vibration and the energy that this person gives off that, that often leaves you feeling confused like are they interested in you or are they not right um and i feel like it's this valentine's day i feel like some of you are really navigating this confusion and if anything this confusion is probably going to be heightened because there is someone here whom you're so um strongly and so powerfully connected to okay that i feel like it, it might be what you feel might be you know um hard to describe or it might be even hard to understand um uh, but I feel like there's something here intuitively that you feel, you know, this person that you're connected to, you feel as though this person is hiding their feelings from you, okay? This is something that you feel. It's it's something that, even though they give off mixed messages, potentially this is something that you, you know, it, there's something here that leads you to believe that this person is hiding their true feelings from, from you, okay? And a part of you, okay, even if it's a small part of you, knows that they are attempting to keep those feelings from you because it's it's out of shame or it's out of fear, okay? And this is something that, even though you might not have a lot of evidence to, you know, tangible evidence to support this, but it's something that you feel very strongly. Um, so this Valentine's Day, I feel like, you know, there may be signs that this person is sending you. Uh, it could be mixed messages, it could be mixed signs, okay, and it could be messages that they're sending you from a distance, but it, it may leave you feeling very frustrated when you get some of these messages, okay, whether it's like text messages that, you know, say one thing and then say something else, completely contradicting um, and therefore leaving you completely confused, or it might be, you know, communication, physical communication, okay, the way that they communicate with their body. Um, it, I feel like there are... Um, and I feel like some of you keep taking educated guesses, okay? Because this person bombards you with communication or a lack of communication, but they, you know, they send mixed messages and it, it leaves you making educated guesses about whether or not this person is into you or whether or not, you know, um, this is uh, something that, you know, you can pursue. Uh, when it comes to, you know, falling, people fall differently, right? Um, people fall for each other differently and in very different ways and every person can be very different some individuals experience fear of rejection they experience fear of commitment um or even like a sense of vulnerability which is what your person is experiencing here okay so not only do they have to face um you know face falling in love with you or face developing some very strong feelings for you but there's also this energy of them feeling Yes, a sense of fear, but also maybe feeling vulnerability, feeling guilt. Guilt. Why is there such a strong energy of guilt? And, you know, perhaps that is due to the reason that they are in a relationship with someone else. So here they are, they're in a relationship with someone else, they're in a marriage or in a partnership, in a commitment with someone else, but they're thinking about you instead, okay? And they're wishing that maybe it was you instead. They feel guilty, okay? They can't help it. And this is where, you know, their guilt is creeping in. And maybe this is what stops them from, even though there's feelings there, they try to hide it, okay? Um, or, you know, they try to not act on it. So maybe this is where we're getting, the, you know, this really heavy energy of guilt. Um, some of the signals, I feel like some of you are going to receive some messages this Valentine's Day, which, yes, it could be, you know... It could be communication that comes in the form of text messages or phone calls, but I feel like there may be this hesitancy in your person's energy, okay? This Valentine's Day, hesitancy for them to reach out and communicate with you, hesitancy for them to even reach out to you on such a day, because that hesitancy is coming from a place of fear, okay? And it's this fear and uncertainty about 
you know, compatibility about whether or not, you know, you're going to, you know, if, is there acceptance or is there rejection? Because if this person is, you know, had their heart broken before, this could be the very reason that they're afraid of facing rejection from you, okay? Because they feel heartbreak. They, they you know, they fear heartbreak, sorry. And some people are just really sensitive to rejection a lot more than others. And if that's the case, it can really deter someone from making the first move, from reaching out, um, or from even like moving forward in a relationship with someone. Uh, I also am getting maybe this person is going through a breakup. Okay, you've got the lovers, the tower or the devil, or has recently gone through a breakup, or maybe you, maybe this is, you know, your energy. You've gone from a painful breakup and, um, you know, either your person or you are trying to sort of guard their heart to avoid feeling any further heartbreak or any further pain so you know this person has feelings for you but maybe they're not ready to date again or maybe they know that you're not ready to date and this is why they're keeping their distance so this is why i say it's so complex it's it's not and because you know this is a general reading and you're not all dealing with the same person and you're not all you don't all have that same dating history right um it, it's it's very complex and it's um yeah it's there's layers here i feel like um I also feel like, you know, a part of them is trying to respect your space or respect your boundaries. Okay, so if you block them, maybe they're trying to respect that. Or if you're in a relationship with someone else, you know, they're trying to respect that. Um, I think that your, your person knows that you're interested in them. Okay, I feel like this is something that your person knows. Because um, what happens is, even if they're shy, um, you know, interested people make eye contact with one another. Okay, especially before you know, looking away, and they tend to hold eye contact for a lot longer, so your person knows that, you know, you're interested in them, and I think you know that, you know, they're interested in you as well, um, and I think how, the way that, the, you know, the both of you look at each other gives you a lot of insight into the physical attraction and the connectedness, connectedness, is that a word? The connectedness that you feel, you know, towards one another, um, so, you know, depending on whether this person loves you or feels attraction or feels a lust towards you, there's a difference in their gaze. And I think, you know, judging by their gaze, it, there's a, it offers a lot of insight into how this person is really feeling. But it, to me, it feels like there's a lot of love or affection in this person's eyes. And it, there's this softness in their eyes, okay? Because that softness is accompanied by feelings of lust, by feelings of affection and attraction. Um, Whereas lustful feelings, okay, with lust, um, lustful feelings, typically, you know, they accompany like a a, um, a winking or a smirking. This is more, you know, lustful emotions. Um, also, notice how before this person, and these are patterns. Remember how we spoke about this person potentially having subconscious patterns, not even being fully aware of it, but... If you take note, like every time this person pulls away before they do, they always seem to be quite eager, okay, eager to see you, eager to communicate, eager, you know, to, to catch up and do something. Um, so, or even when you're a date or with each other, this person is very enthusiastic and they're quite open and they're just, you know, really keen to be um, with you. But then after the date, like the, the level of contact communication then you know, goes downhill from there. Um, What's happening is this is a behavioral pattern your person is playing out okay and they may not be fully aware of this pattern it might not even be something that you're fully aware of up until now or just recently but it's a behavioral pattern that is playing out that typically is indicative of their fear okay their fear of rejection their fear of commitment their fear of intimacy um it can also indicate though okay because you know if we want to get complex here it can indicate that this person is an avoidant has an avoidant attachment style, okay, um, both, or like a disorganized attachment style, and both of these stem from insecurity, um, so, you know, this person sort of creates the space for you to get close with them, but then as soon as they, you know, sense that closeness, those unhealthy patterns kick in, and this is where your person pulls away, so very complex, but this is someone, this is an individual who, uh, you know, Look, they may even, at times, they may actually be busy for real. So it's not always explained by, you know, the um, behavioral patterns here. But 
I feel like this offers a lot of insight, um, you know, the fact that they get close and then they pull away. Um, I think it's also something that you have to think about, you know, it, it could signify that the relationship would not necessarily be very healthy if you did want to pursue one, pursue a relationship with this person. I think it's something, you know, that you would have to think about as well. Um, For some of you, you're going to receive a lot of mixed messages around Valentine's Day or even after from this person. Um, and I think you're going to really try your best to try and interpret them. But guess what? It's probably only going to leave you feeling more confused. Um, it's this, the Seven of Cups, it's this, the way I see it, it's this illusion of transparency. So you may think that this person is being clear to you about you know, the, the feelings that they have for you and the communication that they have for you. But um, what really this is doing is this person is creating the illusion that, you know, they're communicating with transparency, creating the illusion that you're seeing things with transparency. So it's so important, you know, it's so important for you to respond with direct communication, especially, especially when this person is giving you mixed signals or you know is being very elusive i think direct communication by asking like open-ended questions you know um i think that you know that would help bring about some clarity here i think your person is afraid of being in love because i feel like this person is so close to the verge of you know falling in love with you or maybe you know has already fallen in love with you but i think um this person is you know i think real love is something that makes you know people vulnerable and this is i feel like love is a bit of an uncharted territory for them or a new relationship is uncharted territory for them and they have this natural fear of the unknown they have this natural fear of you know maybe they've not really loved it before or maybe they have as we spoke about it hasn't worked out well in the past but i think what happens is they've created habits along the way and those habits are very self-focused or they're very self-contained and they keep continuing to act in those habits and, and it's those very uh, intense behavioral or emotional patterns that are getting in the way of this relationship um new love often has a tendency to stir up old hurts okay so when people enter into a new relationship um you know rarely are they aware of how they've been affected by their previous relationships in the past and you know the way that this person has been hurt in a previous relationship you know whether it's their childhood their upbringing or you know their previous marriage or even their current relationship this has a very strong influence on how they perceive you okay even though it has nothing to do with you it's just that you know that history tends to you know their dating history their romantic history tends to follow them around I also see that this person, because we've got the lovers and the devil, there's something about a, their identity being challenged here. So maybe they've, you know, a lot of their life growing up, they felt unloved. Okay. And remember how we spoke about the low self-esteem and maybe that they, they feel, you know, they have trouble feeling their own value because they didn't have a lot of people around them who cared for them. So something about their right now is, you know, their identity is somehow being challenged in a way because they're kind of familiar in their pain and you know along comes you who, who sees them and who hears them and you know this is challenging the identity that they grew up with um there's definitely you know the feelings that they have for you is stirring up some fears stirring up some fears it's it's bringing up fears from the past okay and it's fears that they have to confront their behavior right now is informing them and it's also informing you of um having um of you know how they're sort of getting in the way of having a fulfilling um and loving relationship okay because of self-sabotage or because of emotional behavioral patterns or subconscious patterns um You know, by getting to know themselves more better, they also 
you know find ha have the best chance of getting to know you more better and getting to know this relationship more better um so you know this valentine's day this person that you do feel a very strong connection with you may receive a lot of interesting and mixed messages from this person and you know they may they may seem a little withdrawn okay they may seem distant they may seem very detached but i feel like this person is staying aloof because this person is someone who's having feet who has feelings for you but i feel like they're not secure in you know feeling those feelings and more importantly expressing those feelings to you okay so right now i feel like those mixed messages essentially are telling you that this person is scared or this person is confused about their feelings um okay because especially if their behavior you know if you've been hang hanging out and you've been really close and if things in you know if his or her behavior has started to change and you know if this person has become more distant and less friendly it just might be that this person has started to see you in a more romantic light has started to see you you know more romantically I think this is someone who wants to be a hero. I think this is someone who wants to fall in love with you. I think this is someone who, you know, wants to make you feel loved and safe. Um, it's this, you know, they want to trigger this hero instinct. Um, I also feel like maybe this is someone who does joke, you know, who jokes um, or who likes to fool around that this person wants to date you or that you're going to end up together. And I think this person does have a deeper motive when they joke. Um, but I think this person is so scared and they're kind of letting fear in, get in the way of things here, okay? Um, yeah, so I feel like, you know, at the end it's... I mean, if you can try and initiate conversations with this individual and just allow them to gradually open up to you. Um, I think this person, you know... Essentially, their mixed messages, what they're telling you is that they want to reveal their heart to you, but they can't uh, out of fear. Um, and I think... For some of you, maybe this person might even unexpectedly and suddenly, you know, might even confess their feelings for you this Valentine's Day. And the, and the reason why they might do that is because they may feel like you have figured it out from someone else. Someone else might have told you that this person's caught feelings. So they might just go ahead and blurt something out this Valentine's Day as well. Which is still going to leave you feeling confused because what they say and how they act don't necessarily match up. Alright guys, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching and listening. Please show your support to the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing to the channel guys. Hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel to grow. Bye!